Um, well, hello everyone. Thank you so much, Sam, for that uh, introduction. Um, okay, so first of all, uh, uh, definite uh, content warnings um, for this. Um, this uh, extract I'm going to read is pretty grim. It features body horror, uh, violence against women, um, and uh, uh, swear words, etc. So I would recommend um, definitely not safe for work and uh, not appropriate around children at all. Um, okay. Um, so I hope I hope anyone who doesn't want to listen is not listening, etc. And um, what I would like to just do really, really briefly is just give you a tiny bit of back. As Sam said this is an extract um, from my novel, which is about a werewolf. Um, in short, um, it's about a woman who is in a relationship with a man who believes that he is a werewolf. Um, she doesn't believe. Um, she just wants him to kind of sort his head out. Um, and she's ended up uh, having him uh, locked in a pantry to try and just see if he can get through the night without doing it. And yeah, so so that's the story. This is um, the chapter that I'm going to read you is kind of the, the climax um, right at the end. <sighs> just need to breathe a second before getting into it. Okay, uh, so Eleanor's flesh. The sun hadn't quite risen. Muffled streaks of light were falling into the room and woke me up cold and stiff on the sofa by the piano. I pulled the blanket more tightly around me. Lawrence, quiet. I went out the back to open the patio doors and let the air in. The light was only dim out here and the moon had gone from the skyline. Something wasn't quite right and I couldn't work out why. I noticed the birds hadn't started singing out here but since it was still dark on this side I thought little of that. The air smelled a little different too. Half not knowing what I was doing, I hurried through the house to the front door, hoping for an explanation for my uneasiness. I wanted to, wasn't he? Everywhere was silent. I stepped out into the foliage, not caring about the mud, the dewy grass or the bugs. I looked up at the sky, squinting in the dimness of the light. The sun was beginning to slowly rise. I turned and rushed back into the house, suddenly worried about Lawrence. Now behind the wide French doors, I looked out to the sky and saw the bold dawn across the grasses outside. And I was thinking that Lawrence would love to see it. When I heard a scuffling at the pantry door. Eleanor, coming Lawrence. I began kicking away some space for my feet to stand so I could pull the nails out with the crowbar. Eleanor, please, I'm so hungry. I know, my love, I'm just getting you out. I was yanking one plank out and then another. I'm going to make you breakfast today. It's a gorgeous morning, you have to see it. I stopped as I heard hard thumps against the door. He was tearing it down from the inside. I waited on the other side with the anticipation of seeing his face and I wanted him to see the door. The door came down. Lawrence stood, seeming bigger than ever and completely naked. Eleanor, you smell sweet. You have to see this. Come here. He curled a finger to beckon me to him. I wanted him to come out as I didn't want him to miss the morning sky, but he looked so enticing. Come to me, Eleanor. I stepped over the silver and Bibles. He reached over and hooked a large finger under my nightdress into my knickers and pulled me to, he kneeled and rubbed his face in my crotch, sniffing like a dog. You smell so sweet, Eleanor, your blood smells so sweet. Why do you tempt me with your sweet blood? He held one hand to my waist a little too tightly and I felt my waist would be bruised once he'd let go. I drew a sharp breath as he tore my skirt down and in that same instant held his mouth to my legs and was licking there like he was parched and it was his milk, his water. And I tried to back away as I didn't want him to be. He held me and of course his wet tongue felt good eating the contents of my women. I hated that I was bleeding and I tried to tell him no, but he wouldn't listen and I couldn't move. Then he stood and put his hand to my neck firmly and then tightly. It was only when I felt his nails pierce my skin 
that I was afraid of Lawrence for the first time. I tried to scream, but his grip strangled my voice box and I could cry out, not a word. He looked straight into my eyes and I saw the wolf there. The wildness inside me and I struggled to be free. I couldn't loosen his grasp, not with all my paltry strength. And then Lawrence panted and howled. He panted more, flecks of spit gathering at the corners of his mouth. Outside, the birds screeched their vicious song and it was daylight. Lawrence's hair was growing in front of me, visibly growing as it had done that day in the bathroom. Then it turned gray and then it was fur. And Lawrence's nose looked as if it was being pulled by some invisible force being stretched and stretched and out and his mouth was now full of canine teeth and it couldn't be, this wouldn't be, eyes misforming into wolf's eyes while remaining the same shade of cold, distant blue. Feet into paws, fingers to claws, huge grey wolf hold me by the neck and I tried to scream for Lawrence, the man, Lawrence, my love, but I was voiceless and I was choking in his grip, his back curving over. I yearned to scream, no, Lawrence, please. It's amazing. He ate his stomach, a ribcage of piano keys. And then I heard my Lawrence saying, I'm so hungry, Anna, will you feed me, Anna? His stinking wolf's breath in my face and his somehow familiar lolling pink tongue rough against my face, dribbling, stinking of the blood he'd consumed from my cunt. He reached out his other paw and then drew a nail and with one practiced slash, he slit open my stomach and my white intestines fell out and I could still breathe and I watched him bend to devour a bloody mess that had come from the inside of me. And momentarily I tried to contain it, tried to pull all my insides back. I had my hands and my guts all in vain and my insides were so hot. I had felt so cool, my whole life so cold. I'd never known the inside of me could be so hot. The wolf ravenously eating me alive, sucking and chewing and bloodying his paws. The pain started to cough up and a stream of blood issued from my mouth down my face. Then he scooped out another paw full of me tearing and ripping, my skin weak, compliant, the organs pulled out pink and hot, and glittering blood, the ever-present tick of the grandfather clock. He fell to the floor, animal that he was, and dragged me down deeper, dragged me down with him deeper into the pantry, my flailing legs dragging and clanging against the useless silver. And I stared at the ceiling in the throes of death as I had stared up while climaxing night after night in this house, resigning my body to him, and he ate. My guts all spilled out. There was so much pain and horror, and then it stopped. My heart stopped reluctantly after so long and so much annihilation of my body. Who would have thought that my little heart would have been so willing to go on and on and on and watch this beast eat parts of me that I had clearly longed to live and in the hurly-burly a light went out within me. My body gave up as the wolf had so easily overpowered me and consumed me and that was it. In one brief moment I stepped away and watched this creature eat me as easy and beast of the field. That's me done.